It's a kicker happen. Feely's kick is up, and it is good. Feely for the pylon. Jay Feely thought he knew everything, for one. Which, to his credit, he knew a lot. He was one of those experienced guys in a lot of areas in life, right? It wasn't just football, right? It was investing money, it was real estate, it was cars, it was, you know, it was, it was everything. He was just one of those types of people where he can connect with a lot of different people. He's a guy's guy, and, um, you know, most kickers are kind of off in their own world. They do their own thing. They work on a different schedule. But Jay would play cards in the locker room with the guys. He would hang out, you know, on the road at dinners. Way to go, boy. Way to go, boy. I love it, boy. I had great relationships my whole career with all the guys that, uh, that I worked with. So you develop that relationship. You develop friendships. Jay was an awesome teammate. He was always, you know, looking out for the younger guys on the special teams unit. He, we always looked at him as a leader. He was an experienced guy. All right, ready to go? Yep. All right, so first story, yep. Feely beats the Broncos. So, Ben, can you describe the type of guy and player that Jay Feely was? Yeah, Jay Feely, well, he was like an energizer bunny. He was definitely a leader, someone that was very vocal in the locker room, but also out on the field, but someone you could rely on. He was great to be around, and he uh, often referred to himself as an athlete more than a kicker. Jay always thought he was more than a kicker. He was a great kicker, but he was the guy that would put, you know, four or five plates on the rack and then bench press. And then everyone in the locker room would kind of just shake their heads like, come on, kicker. I always viewed myself as an athlete and I wanted to be as much a part of the team as I could. Dragged down by Feely at the 34, the ball came I up. wanted to get down there and cover and make tackles. And I wanted to try to make my kicks, but then try to do other things as well. They fall today to the Rams, 19 to 6. Four games left in a disappointing year. If you'd have said before the year, with this schedule and this division, the Cardinals would be 3 and 9. I don't think anybody out there would have believed that. It's so tough because every week is so important in the NFL. And so you get in there on Monday after a loss and it's deflating and everybody's kind of walking around sad. And, you know, you're just trying to find a way to win a game. When you have a long losing streak like that, it's really tough. When I got drafted, they told me in the beginning that you're probably not going to play at all this year. This is kind of your redshirt year, learn the game, do all that. And then through a series of injuries and we were in the middle of a seven game losing streak. Hall is uh, holding his left shoulder now. He's hurt. I think that you kind of know that we're struggling. And I think if you really believe that the kicking game's a third of the game. How can we help our team? Can we shorten the field? Can we return better? Are you ready to announce a starter for Sunday? Well, it's looking like it's going to be John. And we'll have Richard there as well. And both of them had a good week of practice, and we'll see how that goes in the game. Wiz didn't change things with John. He, he trusted John, and I do think we, we were going to be more aggressive um, as a result of having a young quarterback. You know, and so you're going to take some chances that you might not take otherwise. They're like, hey, John, you're starting this week, so prepare like it. And, I'd been preparing the whole year as if I was the starter, but until you're actually in that moment and leading up to the week, uh, you don't really understand. It was a weird week for me. It was a weird month for me because I had torn my groin. Uh, so I was hurt, so I wasn't practicing at all. I was just getting rehab. I think that sometimes people uh, don't understand, that, you know, oh, he's the kicker. Like, you can't go out for a two and a half hour practice to kick a football all two and a half hours. It's a violent range of motion. I knew I was gonna play. It was just a matter of kind of gutting through it. He's an athlete, and so I think that he's gonna do everything he possibly can to be ready to play on Sunday. It's been an eventful week for both the Denver Broncos and the Arizona Cardinals as they get ready to meet here in week 14. Arizona will go with an untested rookie, John Skelton. I remember we had a, a really strong running game plan going into that game, and we had certain off-tackle plays that we were just going to run down their throats. We're not going to be in third and long situations. We knew the special teams unit was going to have to show up every game. Jay hit two in a row, and so you, you kind of watch the scenario. A 48-yarder that gives the Cardinals a 6-3 lead with 11.50 to go in the first half. Defenses don't like three points, just so you just so you're aware. We want to score, we want the offense to score, we want to go up, we want to, you know, 
pass rush. We want to do all the things that we want to do on defense. Throws off his back foot, lobbing it far side, picked off by Rhodes in midfield, running right to the. You kind of watch this scenario, and, and it's got to be a field goal. It's got to be in a hash mark. It can't be an extra point because they're going to play that differently. Spence was a great special teams coach in the NFL. Very aggressive. He felt like special teams could help a team. He was going to put something in and find a way to take advantage of your skill sets. So you kind of notice it's there. What you saw on film was bore itself out in the game. It was Wolverine to the right, Michigan to the left. You know, we'd lost seven in a row and we thought it was an opportunity to give the team a spark. We didn't know it was coming, or at least me as a quarterback didn't know it was coming. And you're trying to make sure you do all the stuff that you practiced and, you know, don't go too soon because then they'll recognize it. So you got to sell it and then get out there. And then the big thing is just catch the ball. There was an expectation that we were going to pull it off, but I've got confidence in my hands given my experience playing Australian rules football. Well, here he goes from about 53 metres, he'll kick this ball. The accuracy is the thing. Oh, look at that, over the fence, another one. Ben Graham, Couchy has kicked two. It's a game where you kick the ball to each other and you hand pass the ball to each other. So you're not throwing it, but you're flicking it with your, with your hands. He was probably the perfect guy to be in that position because he was throwing balls and pitching balls and he could do all kinds of stuff with the football that most NFL punters couldn't do because he grew up, he played 10 plus years as a professional. So it was effectively just suck the defense in thinking that we're gonna kick it. So grab the ball, put it on the spot, and then as soon as it hits that spot, you turn around and you flick it. 23 yard attempt now by Jay Feely. It's kind of a blur. Snap, and it's a fake. They pitch it to Feely. He's running right. Feely for the pylon, touchdown! A fake field goal touchdown! If your offense is struggling, let your kicker have it. When I finally got to, I don't know, maybe the three yard line, I realized that linebacker wasn't gonna get there. And I think that was the moment that I realized, oh, I'm gonna score here. I guess that's why Feely wears gloves as a kicker. The little bugger got to the end, found the space, turned the jets on and ran into the end zone <laughs> for a touchdown. And he tried to do the Green Bay leap into the stands and failed miserably. He didn't get in because I think it's probably a six foot wall and he couldn't get his tiny little body up over the top. Remember him not being able to get up as high on that wall as, as most of the, the real athletes were able to. That wall was a little higher than I thought it was. Let me tell you something about special teams coaches and special teams players, all right? We will practice 10 fake punts, fake field goals for two, three years. And it takes the perfect opportunity, the perfect time to pull it out and the perfect guy to pull it out for. And we knew Jay was going was gonna be the man that day. But then you quickly snap and you think, oh my God, we still got 48 minutes to go. 13-3 Cardinals lead, a touchdown run by Jay Feely. He also has two field goals. He's made 16 in a row. I think it helped me because, you know, when things go well in a game, and you've seen it in every sport where a guy gets hot and he just can't miss. It'll be about a 55-yard attempt. Jay Feely has made 16 straight. Kick on the way, it has the leg. Five-yard field goal. The guys accounted for all 16 points in the first half of the cards. And that's kind of how it was that day for me. Like, you just feel comfortable and good. Whenever you have a kicker where you're like, you know, we're at the 40, let's be conservative. We don't want to turn the ball over in this situation because we have three points already. So let's go in, let's play within ourselves, knowing that we have three points basically automatic when you have a, a kicker like that. So it's fourth down and on comes the Arizona Cardinal offense, Jay Feely. Snap, ball down, Feely's kick is up and it is through. Feely's kick is up and it is good. It's 22 to three, Feely. He gets the extra point. The extra point is good. An extra point on the way and good from Feely. The Cardinals beat the Broncos 43-13. Jay Feely, have a day, baby. Never before, never after had I taken one of my kids, I couldn't take my girls into the locker room, but my son into the locker room, and he was old enough to be able to bring into the locker room. But I just spur the moment, I saw him, and I grabbed him out of the stands. Somebody handed him to me, and I grabbed him, and I brought him in with me. I just wanted to kind of experience that moment with him. You know, and to be able to take him in, to be able to hear all the cheering. That's the type of guy that 
he is. He wants his family and his kids to enjoy his moment. My first win when I was a starter was that game and Jace is in there and Jay's hugging his son and, and I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Special teams, good job, especially Jay Feely. Outstanding yeah. job. I mean, you walk in the locker room and you think, I just kicked five field goals. I just, I just scored a touchdown. I kicked three extra points, so do the math. I mean, that's probably a day that, you know, you won't forget as long as you live. Man, Jay had us all fooled. He talking about he had a growing injury and then he out running guys like that, man. He, he fooled us all, but, um, you know, he played tremendous for us. And um, Jay Philly might be the offensive player of the week in the NFL. I got decent speed. I'm getting, I'm getting up there, uh, you know, in age. But, uh, um, you know, I like to kind of think of myself as an athlete, not just a kicker. And, you know, hopefully today I'd prove that. I think most kickers, they relish opportunities like that whenever they get a chance to kick a game winner, kick a tying field goal, whatever it is. It's usually one moment. It's like a make or break moment. I think for Jay, that was a whole game where he was just lights out, doing so well. Whatever he wants to do, he sets his mind to it. He accomplishes it. Jay was one of those guys that everybody loved and you can appreciate. And so when he had that epic day, I think everybody was very happy for him. He brought so much more to the game and to his team and to his teammates that he should be seen as an athlete, not just a kicker, because he wanted to be seen as more than just that guy that went out there to kick field goals. I wanted to do everything that everyone else did, every run they did, every lift they did. I wanted to be as much a part of the team as I could and as much a leader as I could. You know, so to me, that was like a reward for me for all the effort that I put in in college and the NFL for my whole career. I finally got that opportunity to kind of show it. I'm an athlete, not just a kicker.